going on, Hoop Nation? It's Ben Reeve here from The Hoop Show. And uh, that music is very loud, but that's okay. It's fading down a little bit. Uh, welcome. This is the first Sunday night edition of our show. Uh, and with me, uh, and I've got two panellists or guests at the moment, uh, and they are Paul James and Anna Pavlou. How are you going, everyone? Really well. It's good to be aboard. Cats had a loss, but that's okay. Um, we, it's only it's only uh, pre-season, so we're not too fussed about that just yet. But um, how are we feeling just generally about how the pre-season's gone? Are you feeling good about things? Are you a bit concerned? We'll start with you maybe, Paul, if you want. What's your, oh, yeah, what's your um, overall takeaway of the... Uh, before we get into the, the, the Brisbane game, what's your overall thoughts on the pre-season so far? I mean, I feel like it's the same thing that we've been able to say about Geelong's pre-seasons for the bulk of the last 15 years, really, where it just... It doesn't really matter, um, good, bad, or otherwise. It's really not what they're there for. So it seems like a pretty. I mean, it seemed like a pretty song, a strong start after the Geelong Hawthorne game. Everyone was making a big fuss. Came back to ground a little bit with the game this week, but then you can sit there and talk about the outs till the cows come home for both teams. Like it's just, it's impossible to get a real read. It's just, it's good to get kilometers in the legs, and that's about all that really matters. I think that's what it looked like a little bit, dude. And they're just the players having a bit of a run around and. Uh... You know, at moments they looked like they were taking. A, they forgot that it was just a practice game. They were taking a bit more seriously, but it was just a just a bit of a run, a bit of a practice. And what, what were your thoughts? I mean, I know you didn't get to catch all the games or all of the games necessarily, but um, were you? Are you do you give it much? Do you give much credit? The do you care much about the preseason? Are you you know? Oh no, doom and gloom. We lost last. We lost the. It's all over. Write the season off. What, where's your head at? Oh, absolutely not. Like. As my dad always says, the practice match is like dancing with your sister. It's a bit awkward. It's you know, it's, the pre- it's preparation for the you know, you got to do it to get to the to get to the real thing. So, yeah, as we all as we're all agreeing, it's just getting that run in the legs. And yeah, look, we were we were doing we were uh, last season we were doing practice up until after Easter Monday. So yeah. you know, get it out of the tank now and you know pre- prepare and then actually go go hard this season. It's a long season, and uh, yeah, we don't want to get go too hard too early, do we? But um, yeah, I think we just got to take a deep breath. And uh, it was just one game, and uh, clearly we're missing what seven or eight players or something out of that side. But let's the, let's have a look at the, the game. Line. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we played up in where did we play? Uh, it's uh, um, Max Holmes Arena or something like that. What was it called? Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that'll do. something like that. Yeah, up, up in Queensland anyway. Uh, not at the Gabba. We were playing Brisbane up there, so we always seem to play a game in Queensland during the preseason almost every year. Um, but, yeah, look, we didn't get the win. Uh, I think we lost by 40 or something like that. 46 points. How much was it? 40, 46. 46, yeah. yeah. So it is what it is. But uh, but there was a few things that came out of the game, I guess. Um, it was Danger's first game in charge. Um, and uh, we had a bit of the Collar Dashney went off. Are we concerned about Collar Dashney being okay? It looked like he had a, maybe a concussion, but... I haven't heard anything from the club yet about how he might be feeling days afterwards. I mean, I'm not too concerned about him in terms of round one, but I am concerned about him more broadly speaking, and not because of his ability on the field or anything like that, but, I mean, if anyone knows the story of his brother, his brother's career was ended because of concussion injuries. And Collar's had a few over the over the journey. I don't think anything's necessarily been as visually ugly as some of the hits that his brother took, but... Head trauma is head trauma, and uh, I feel like they've got to be stacking up a little bit. I'm, I'm sure the club is doing their due diligence with all the science and research and those sort of things that's available, but he has taken a lot of these hits, so I can't help but just wonder a little bit. It's a uh, couple last year, I think it, I was reading. Um, yeah, you, and I think there's been a couple yeah. over the years prior as well. Not necessarily in the same year, but there's been a few. Yeah. And look, yeah, there's there's obviously, well, uh, again, I'm not, I'm no hell scientist, but like, his brother has taken quite a few. There's and it did put an end to his career, so you just can't help but wonder a little bit. Fingers crossed, I suppose. Um, I yeah. guess, are you concerned, Anna, at all, or it's just let's just it's what 10, 15 days away? How, however long it is till the first game on the Friday night against the Magpies. It's um, I, I guess it's probably more the longer term for 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 Jake more than anything else. But what's, you have any thoughts on it? No, I agree with that. I think well, the, I think. We were really good at managing our injuries last year. It got us to a flag, as we know. So I trust what the club knows. Yeah. No, I think you've got to trust the club, don't you? As much as they like to Absolutely. keep their cards close to their chest on these injuries and so forth, like um, 
you know, we don't know what's happening with Tom Hawkins, but you're starting to hear that, oh, maybe he's a chance for round one when that was never really the talk uh, when he went under the knife. Um, is it, are you, are you, Paul, I'll start with you. Are you 50 50 on Hawk or are you more thinking like a round three, round four situation? It just fa- feels a little bit like some of that pre round one sort of chatter that fans fall into the trap of everyone kind of falls into the trap of really you start to hear a few rumblings maybe someone's tracking a little bit better than you expect but you would expect the Geelong Football Club probably of all clubs to be that little bit more conservative that little bit more cautious um if he plays round one then I have to assume that he is a hundred percent fit at that point um but I hope that they just give him even if he even if their feel is that maybe he would have been okay give him a week give him two whatever it happens to be yeah. yeah, I agree with that. There's no point, as we saw last year, every Danger. time there was an injury, yeah, we would extend that break. So why wouldn't we do it again? You know, we're obviously trying to push for another flag, as you can see by the decisions made and recruiting and leadership this year. So there's no point in risking it, especially they're older. We know that. So, yeah. yeah another year older everyone is, aren't they? Um, and we've brought a few young guys in, but... Um... Yeah, look, back to the game a little bit. What did we think, and maybe we'll stay with you, Anna, what did you think of the um, entries inside 50? Was it was it the fact that we were missing those key tools in, in uh, Jezza and Hawkins or was there something else that was going on? I think, I think probably most people would say you don't really have, you can't really say too much about the game if, if you've got your bigs out. Um, I guess uh, Stengel bobbed up for a goal and I think a couple of other smalls might have kicked one or two, but... Uh, but it was mostly uh, mostly the Stengel show with these two goals and twenty touches. Um, but I don't know, like yeah, two big guys out. Can you read much into it or not? I mean, as I as I kind of saw it, we were using Radigalia as you know giving that, I guess giving him a go in those key positions because at the end of the day, Hawkins is going to retire one day, Cameron is going to retire one day, and Radigalia is coming into his prime. So again, kind of getting brushing away the cobwebs, doing that kind of stuff. I don't mind that we're making these mistakes now. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. And as much as the Brisbane fans can be, we beat Geelong. Well, no, it doesn't mean much when it was just to, especially for those that that midfield group as well, just to get a run in a different way because you know losing Joel is a big thing. So I I, I don't read too much into it. Yeah, I would, yeah, and look at again. It will, I'll say this a few times during this episode. It is just the preseason, and maybe we'll maybe we'll have different comments to make about it. Round two, round three. Um, once we've seen uh, some of the some of the well, a few games, seen the boys play with each other a little bit more. There's a lot of new guys coming into this team, and um, and you can only imagine that they're going to double down a bit more on the rotations and the load management side of things. It's worked last year, and and as I said, they're all another year older now, so you'd, you'd think that was going to happen again. Um, it was good to see Sam Simpson come back. Uh, he's a bit of a favourite of mine. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a shame. He's missed a fair bit of last year. Oh, pretty much. Did he play a game last year? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it was really yeah, good to see him. Yeah, maybe one, maybe two, again. Max, I would have thought. Yeah. Um, was good in that grand final, actually, until he got KO'd um, yes. in 2020. In 2020. But uh, yeah, nice to see Silk running out there again. And hopefully he'll um, he'll get a few more games. Are you expecting much from Silk this year, or both? Or maybe Paul, you start with you. Are you, are you thinking he'll be a twenty regular twenty two player, or he's a little bit way back now because of um, you know a few other guys we've brought in and uh, just lack of exposure yeah. to the senior footy for a while. Yeah, I think the latter there, unfortunately, because um, I am a big fan of what he brings to the to the club. He's um, I mean, as, as the name's kind of been implied over the years, there's a bit of silk to him. But at the same time, I think if if all players or like, you know, largely the squad is fit, similar to what we had last year, then I would struggle to find a fit for him. Um, and again, he's, he's a fantastic player. And I think in a lot of teams, he would be a starting 2022, sorry, starting 22 player. Still thinking about a flag, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he would, he's a starting 22 yeah. player. Um, but... I just don't know if the Geelong outfit, that's the case anymore. It'd be a shame um, to lose a father-son, wouldn't it? Uh, but he's definitely got a lot of value. I mean, you can see what he's capable of. So, um, And if it wasn't for injuries, he'd probably be playing a lot more senior footy. Um, did you, yeah. Anna, did you get to see Cooper White at all in the maybe the Hawthorne game or anything like that? Have you? He, he was a, an early draft, well, not an early draft pick, one of our... Draft picks from last year. I, I had a bit of a look at him. The, the new number eleven uh, looked okay uh, for his limited amount of time. I saw him. I think he played a half against uh, Brisbane, but might have played 
uh, mostly with the VFL team in the week before. Did you catch any of that one or in the earlier? Yeah, in the I, other watched, week? I, I watched it, like a few of the highlights. Yeah. My dad, my dad, I think my dad's watched pretty long with the man. He'll always let me know. And he oh, was yeah. quite keen on the way he played. So yeah. I trust, I trust my dad sometimes, except he thought Mitch Brown was going to be good. So yeah, everyone did though, didn't they? Yeah, I guess, you know. <laughs> and he, he had a reasonable career. He just didn't become the player that we all hoped he exactly. would be. And no, it's not. It's pretty hard to crack it at the really. He was always going to be a good player in a yeah. non-finals contending team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, and I good think support for Melbourne exactly. in their premiership year. And so, someone I don't know if it was you, Paul or Annie, but um, talking about Asava being down back a little bit, I'm liking. I, mean, I wouldn't say it's an experiment this year because we did see a little bit of it last year as well. But I'd say that's looking pretty good so far, and it, and we do need a bit more coverage down there, uh, especially now with with Jack Henry being out in the medium yeah. term, whatever medium term means. Um, do, do you think that's, uh, and maybe stay with Anna again, do you think that's something we stick with? Uh, and do you think Rat's going to be uh, there round one and getting a fair crack at it to, to really nail down that position? Well, I think, yeah, talking, I guess, about those ins and outs, you can't really go wrong now. We know Henry's out with Radical Ear at that, in that centre-half back position. And they always say that it takes longer for the tools to kind of come into their own and, understand you know we saw Hawkins it took him many many years until he eventually broke out and became you know the powerhouse that he is and he just gets better with age so I expect Radigalia in the same environment that Hawkins became a champion can do the same kind of thing and you bring him into the side and he doesn't just have to be in that one key position you know give Stanley a rest in the ruck it's true Segler whoever it is you know give Hawkins and Cameron a chop out and then eventually you know He's a player that everyone wants in at their club who can play anywhere. Because didn't we have Stanley yeah. floating back? Sorry, Paul, to cut you off. Didn't we see Stanley floating back after taking the centre bounce uh, and being that sort of ruckman in the back line? But now you, I guess you've got the Sa- Sava down there who's got a nice leap on him. Uh, maybe that'll change the way things um, look a little bit in terms of that ruck strategy, which w- really worked well last year. Sorry, Paul, jump in. No, no, I mean, look, I was, I was a big fan, and I, I guess I won't show my hand too much for the votes later on, but I was a big <laughs> fan of how Sava played. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know how I couldn't show my hand there, but um, he played a really, really good game. And obviously there was, you know, we still had a decent score kicked against us, but I, I think that was no fault of his own, really. He he did a great job holding down the key the key forwards, and Brisbane have now got quite a few of them. Um from Eric Hipwood to Danaher, you can throw Gunston in there now as well. Um, like they've got a lot of goal scoring, tall mid to tall uh, forwards now, and he he did a fantastic job in there. Um, it was just kind of, especially in that first quarter, it was like a twenty to six or twenty to nine yeah. forward fifty entries in that first in that first quarter alone. Like there's only so much you can do. Um, really, it's it's kind of holding the damn wall together, ideally, and they, him and the others did a pretty damn good job considering. So. Uh, I'd like to see him stick around there. Interestingly, um, as a result of that, and I think you know probably just a little bit of flirting with positions in the in the preseason, but SDK actually did trend forward a couple of times mm. during that goal, even leading to a goal at one point that he scored there. Uh, I guess he just got a sniff from the grand final. Now he just wants more, but he's hungry. Um, yeah, he floated forward in the uh, uh, Hawks game as well. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, just a little bit of give a. And I, I thought I looked at that and I thought that's probably about Asava getting more exposure without having D, uh, DK uh, yeah. there to help him out. Um, At the same thing, they're the things you can possibly do when, like, supposing the Hawkins is out a little bit uh, for the first couple of weeks or whatever it ends up being. Um, if you're able to roll Sam DeConing or Radigali, like if the defense is holding up well, if Stanley's doing exactly what Anna said, where he's kind of floating back into that, in, to kind of fill a key defensive sort of position, then it allows you to kind of mix things up a little bit with some of those tall, like, tall defenders going forward the other way um, the skill set that Sam DeConing brings is very different to what Asava brings, and yet they're both tall focal points So um, that will complement Jeremy Cameron in different ways and Ollie Henry now as well. So um, I think it, there's there's something to it, and I think it gives them a few few options if they're able to, I mean, I guess round one against Collingwood, kind of hold off the, the tall forwards a little bit, then they can potentially try and get them the other way with one of those two going forward. Mm. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. I mean, we, we got blessed last year with DeConning just coming in a big way real quick and uh, close to all Australian, uh, 
in, in a lot of people's minds as well. Probably Stephen May, fair enough. Um, but yeah, he was, no, you see. Um, but yeah, look, this might be his year. Uh, I'm predicting big things for a, from a, a big baby Guthrie this year as well. Uh, it was good to see Grian Myers get in amongst, amongst the possessions as well. He had, a, he had about 23, and uh, Cam Guthrie, two time Kaju medalist, he had a couple 22 as well. Uh, I did like what Tanner Bruin was doing with, uh, I think he had about seven tackles. So I did like what he he's working hard, getting a lot of the ball, and uh, doing all the tough one percenters as well. Um, Brad Brad Close has been a little bit quiet. I think he had another twelve, but that's pretty standard for Brad, isn't it? Around twelve to fifteen touches. Uh, I would like to see him start to increase uh, his amount of uh, disposals, just to sort of because he has such a great impact when he has it. Another couple of touches a game makes a bit of a difference when Brad gets near it. Um, but yeah, look, it's, overall though, stats were pretty not not really flattering for the Catters, really. Um, you know, we no one got over twenty three touches. I think everyone was, as, you, as people were saying, just having a bit of a run, doing what needed to happen. Um, but yeah, look, I think um, I think I think we'll be okay. I think you know you can't read too much into that game. I think uh, just just bank it, move on, and uh, we've got the Pies game in uh, how many days to the Pies game now? Was it? I think well, as of when we recorded, it'd be like twelve days. Twelve days. Twelve days of Christmas, very good. I I have got my tickets to the Collingwood game. By the way, I'm not sure if either of you are going. Uh, if you can make it there, but um, my hope is on yeah. le- level two somewhere. I think. And and are you getting along this to this one at you all? Should be. Should um, be. Yeah, depending, I guess, on everything and how hectic yeah. how hectic life is. But no, you can't really miss round one as reigning premiers. So. If we can get a ticket, yeah. that's the thing. Like, yeah, it's um it. I don't know. Will it, will it be a sell? It might be dependent on weather, I suppose. That's the kind of thing as well. Yes. Uh, now, what else have we got? So let, let's talk about um, let's let's do some votes. Uh, so I'll I'll tell you what I had. Uh, I went with. I'm just pulling up my votes here. Pretty graphics and all that. Yeah. Will I get my graphics to work? Probably not. <laughs> um, but that's okay. That's this is just. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about that next time. Uh, I've, I reckon, and I may be reading someone else's votes here, I had um, Cam Guthrie for the one vote. Uh, I thought he was pretty good uh, with his 22 touches. He just seemed to do... I mean, he looked like he was a bit of, having a bit of a run, but uh, I was pretty impressed with him. Tom Stewart, uh, you know, 53... Sorry, uh, 500 metres gain or thereabouts. Uh, and Tyson Stengel, even though he got a goal late, I thought he's looking pretty good. And probably I probably gave him a couple for the... Um, uh, for the game against Hawthorne as well, even though we're not counting. I've probably combined my votes together there. So, and again, yeah, I, think these, the, I think you've read the wrong votes, but anyway, maybe or whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've probably read someone else's votes. Anyway, what did what did you think, Paul? Um, was that bias for me was the three, and I swear there's no bias. I've gone Tanner Bruin with the three. Vote. That's where I've got. Yeah. I've read out the wrong one. So Tanner Bruin yeah. was made for me was the big one. Um, yeah, Grime Myers for me. Uh, like really, really efficient. And that's probably been one of the, and it was actually, oh, geez, now I am just plugging the show. Uh, that was one of the things that we discussed when he was on behind the play recently was that his shore kicks was the one thing that the club was really trying to have to work hard with him on because of that unique technique of his um, kicking the ball actually made the shorter kick something that was a bit more challenging for him. Um, like that more stabby sort of hit someone that's 15, 20 meters away sort of kick as opposed to a larger a larger length kick. So, but he was like sifting through the game. Like he was nailing them left, right, and center in the first few minutes alone. There was just some brilliant little, uh, I don't know. For most players, we'd call him a snap for him. It's just a conventional yeah. kind of straight, straight leg kick, but um, he was just tagging them everywhere. Got his hands on the ball, like set up a lot of great plays. Obviously our forward, our forward line wasn't quite as efficient as it needed to be that night. So um, that maybe consequently made his efforts not, shine as brightly but i thought he was fantastic uh tom stewart is just a wall that you can't get past and radically the exact same reason they both of those two tom stewart and radically had eight in set marks so okay um really good numbers for both of them yeah that's not too bad um and in terms of the highlights did anyone sort of stand out for you that like well okay uh that that's that was interesting i guess it i, I don't know how much votes really mean at the moment to be honest we'll probably they start don't. in earnest <laughs> um in the collingwood game and we'll, we'll keep a yearly tally um, from our from our three votes, I suppose. But uh, any anything for you stand out at all? Anyone that sort of oh, that was interesting. I just think again, I don't. T- I, don't I try not to take too much on the practice matches because again, it's just trying to run around. So I thought yeah. um, 
probably give Radicalia a few votes and um, I'd give Stengel a few just because Radicalia was able to just kind of slot in where they needed him and I'm sure they were frantically taking notes. You know, Chris Scott said, I think, earlier in the week in an interview, I don't know who, I think maybe it was, maybe it was with SCN, he said, um, you know, there's 30 guys who deserve to play in round one. Yeah, so, that's right. you know, I know that they were just looking at every little thing that everyone was doing and taking notes away from whatever you know, game plan or whatever was working or not working. But I think Radaglia did what he had to do. Mm. And you just don't, and a lot of it's just, um, you're going to pick a round one team and that's going to be different round 10, round round 20. And that, what a problem finals. to have, yeah. really. We've got some depth, you know. Yeah. Can't complain when your coach is saying before round one, there's 30 blokes who deserve to be there. It's a good it's a good problem to have. And we don't. Adam, you, sh- you shouted out Tyson Stengel along the way there. Um can we give goal the away in the preseason? Yes, I'm. I'm happy to give it to the Stingers <laughs> right now. So. He just openly <laughs> took the piss out of him with the way he just moved part of those seas. It, it, it reminded brilliant. me of the Gary Ablett goal against Port in oh, uh, yeah. 2007, where he parted the seas and put us in front, and then bloody Cassisi. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that would have been the nice. loss we needed to have. We did need to have a loss, but oh well. What are you going to do? All right, so on to next. Uh, can we say next week? It's it's, it's there's a next fortnight. Well, the next game is Collingwood, uh, and we'll all remember the last time we played Collingwood in the qualifying final last year. Nothing notable about that. We're, nothing at all. We just won it by six points, um, but it was a bit of a scare little point there. Uh, Jezza and Gary Rowan uh, had three goals each. Uh, we'll all remember that Jezza goal from the boundary. The uh, I've got my, my over ear for, headphones on at the moment, but uh, but Tommy Atkins was great. He had twenty three touches and nine tackles as well. Um, and we have won in terms of recent history, though, with the Pies. We have won the last four against them. So, uh, but they always seem to scare me a little bit. I don't know about you. What, what's your confidence level going into this one, Anna? Are you do you approach Cats games supremely confident? I mean, or do you go in there think, oh, we're going to lose? I've got to really woken up with a bad feeling. Uh, doom and gloom. Uh, what, how do you go into it? I'm all about the feelings and the vibes, you know. Uh-huh. Marbo, it's the vibe, all that. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but I think, I guess I'm I'm a realist in the fact that my dad, and as you guys, like my dad was born in 63, so waited 44 years to see a flag. So, you know, and I'm, I'm very lucky to have seen four at what, 22, can't complain. Yeah. But um, he's much, he's very much a realist and having, I go in with pretty low expectations, you know. I'm still riding high off, obviously winning a flag. That was it's been a great summer. Every you know, the sun shone brighter and everything, all of that. But yeah, going into round one, I I know that Collingwood can really only go up after what they did last year and they've got a hunger that I mean, I think Geelong's been able to retain that hunger. But my I guess my question is, and I I think I'll be proven wrong, is you know, are we are we still really hungry after winning a flag? Which I think, you know, they tell what they tell us what we want to hear. Yeah, we're we're all training the house mm. down and we're hungry. But will that come out in round one? That's your biggest fear because Collingwood have a lot of you know they want to get us back. We yeah, beat true. them yeah. two close games. You know, last year we got them twice. So yeah, I think it'll be another close one. Well, they're probably thinking. Well, we went. We 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 could have been premiers. Uh, we we nearly had Geelong, uh, and they look what they did to Sydney. Uh, even though Collingwood lost to Sydney as well. Um, but yeah, like. Could have been them, so they're probably thinking they're a red hot crack and give it everything. Uh, they've had an extra week as well. Uh, not that it means a whole lot over the course of a summer, but um, I don't know. Like Paul, what, what are you? Are you going into this feeling supremely confident or a little bit? You know, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say anything just yet. Oh. Look, supremely is a bit of a stretch, but I'm confident. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, a little bit probably. A little bit of that confidence probably hinges on what happens with Jordan Dugowie in the next day or so. Yes, Because yes. there's obviously talk that he may or may not get scrubbed. I think he should um, get scrubbed. And he's personally. obviously, well, I mean, as a Cats fan, we all would thoroughly like <laughs> no, to see him. No, you want happen, the best players out there. That's, is that no, the right let's answer? Just get the bank, the bank the win because I mean, if we can't play with Tom Hawkins, they can't play with Dugowie. Uh, Dugo. um, yep. But like, setting, setting that aside, um, he's, a, he's obviously a brilliant player. In the, pre, in the prelim, he kicked two goals against us in really important parts of the game um, that nearly kind of ripped the game away from us. So he's important and there's, there's really no arguing that. So I'm not going to complain that he's not there um, or if he's not there, sorry. But otherwise, I guess I'm not as bullish about Collingwood going up from here. Um, and I mean, you hear this get touted a little bit, but like they, they obviously had that incredible streak last year, but their percentage 
is well, you can't say it's poor. It was north of a hundred, but mm. for a team that won so many games, it was poor. And it's because of just how close all those games were. It only takes one kick in most of those games to completely flip the result. Um, and the likelihood, and it's, this is now me just going all math teacher on the whole thing, the likelihood of them repeating that sort of a, an effort, like in game in, game out, being able to just position themselves in the right spot and have the, have the ball bounce the right way and all those sorts. Like it's just it's highly unlikely that it's going to happen again. I said, I'm saying highly likely because I don't want this to come back and bite me on the ass. No, but, no you got to make um, bold calls, mate. You... <laughs> oh, fine. They're going to finish dead last. Okay. No. no. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just... Geelong and Collingwood games have historically been tight since really when we won the flag in 2007. It hasn't... I mean, there's been one or two blowouts, weirdly, in 2008, yeah. part of the way through the season and then in the, the prelim in 2010. But otherwise, I really can't think of any that we blew them out in 2011 re- as well yeah the last yeah we might have blown them away a couple yeah. of times oh yeah the final game before the finals yeah, but one of really, three times don't we've read too much into that do you really yeah yeah uh, sorry there's i guess there's the occasional thing but the majority of them have been hard fought games one way regardless of who's gone on to win so yeah. I, I think um, um, i don't expect it to change yeah well i'm kind of in, with, in the same camp as you where i think colin will probably drop off a little bit but you could also make a case if you're just comparing them last year to this year, you're saying, well, you know, those games could go either way. But but we're also just scanning that they might actually improve 10% as well. And so those no, games that they... Lost Henry, they're done. Yeah, well, true. So they did lose <laughs> a couple of... Clo- they did win a couple of close ones, but maybe they'll win those close ones by five goals this year. So we just don't know. Like, I suspect yeah. they'll either drop off a fair bit um, or they'll improve a fair bit. Um, so they'll be quite... I don't know. It's that's not that's really sitting on the fence, isn't it? Completely. Uh, if yeah. I have to pick, I'm going to say they'll drop off a fair bit. But I, I'm going into this one very confident that we'll get the win. Uh, it'd be nice to start off the premiership defence with our 17th straight win and a 1-0 start. Um, probably less optimistic about the Carlton game, um, but that's a fair way off still. So we'll, we'll save that one for a little bit later. Now, in terms of the ins and outs, I guess. Um, how much do you read into the team that was picked for the Brisbane game? I guess look, Henry's not going to be there and even play with Brisbane either. Hawkins maybe might come back. Uh, Coladashny's a maybe. Uh, Jez is a maybe if the baby if uh, the baby arrives on the day or round about that time. Uh, even though it's in Victoria, he still might not be able to make it. And uh, Duncan with the old man calf injury as well. Uh, so there's a few question marks. Um, what are, Annie, what are you thinking about the 22, the makeup of the 22? Are you thinking it'll be a bit younger or, or I don't know? What, I'll leave it with you. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Naturally, I guess coming off a flag, you want as you want to model as much as you can off that. But obviously, that's that never happens in football as much as we only lost really Joel out of that yeah. 22, so or 23, I guess. But um, I just, in general, I don't think we should fear that we're just going to keep growing because, as you know, we, we're trying to rebuild on the run. We've been doing it for 15 years and I, yeah. it's working and we make no apologies that we actually want to compete every year. And as I said, I'd rather be a competitive side every year if it means we get a flag every I'm exactly 10 of the them, same. You know? Yeah, I feel so the same. I'm not scared in the way that I'm, I guess I'm accepting that we're going to have naturally going to bring these guys in. So I'm, almost certain Ollie Henry will come in. Um, and I'm pr- and as I said, as we were talking about before, Radagalia for um, Jack Henry. So I think with Radagalia coming in, you know, everyone will be a bit nervous about that, but mm. he can kind of pave a path for when Jack Henry comes back, you know, if yeah. Jack Henry can, if hopefully Radagalia is so good that they're fighting for the spot, you know. So I guess Radagalia can, you know, pave that path for Henry to become that flexible player that we've seen him, be able to do before with you know that Richmond game last yep. year where he swung mm, forward and mm. the winner and stuff like that, which Radagalia is very capable of, you know, doing match saving things at both ends of the ground. So he's, de- I think he's he'd be a lock for round one. What was the game he uh, spoiled the ball on the boundary line? <laughs> Sorry, on the goal the line. The one that was going to go for a goal and he <laughs> spoiled it. I think it was against Sydney at one point. But... Bloody match saving spoil for the other team, but uh, <laughs> we still love him. But goodness me, <laughs> no, we make make errors when we're young. We do. Thoughts. What are your thoughts, Paul, um, uh, on the I makeup mean, of the 22? I mean, you, you went through a laundry list of players there. There's so that many. I, yeah, yeah. I think we'll obviously be in a bit of trouble in that sense from Hawkins being a 50-50 to yeah, yeah. Henry obviously out, Jeremy Cameron 
that's just in the hands of fate, really. Um, and Mitch Duncan, yeah, seems unlikely again. Um, but that's, I guess that's fine at this point. We do have the potential, well, all the ins compared to the 2022 Premiership team of, of Bruin and Henry and... Um, I'm just going blank on the third pillar there, and it's going. It's Jack Gold Bowes. Coast. I always forget him too. Jack yep. Bowes. He was great in the um, in the match sim. Yeah, he, he's actually done a fantastic job, but I'll have to. I'm clearly still having acclimatized to him being on our list yet. Um, but we'll get there. Uh, and then, I mean, you know, we mentioned the likes of Cooper White and stuff before. They did play some really great games. Like, is that enough to to get them a round one spot? You never know. I guess with with some openings becoming available. For, for at least the first maybe week or two, there's an opportunity to kind of grab a hold of something and really, really make it your own. Um, I don't think we'll be seeing the likes of Jai Clark make it this early in the piece. I don't no, think he'll be doing so. a Joel and being a walk up round one, um, which might just help the the Joel comparisons of what everyone goes through because uh, Jai won't debut round one most likely and we can just put all that to bed and just let him be his own player. I put out a video but, um, about him being a captain, so I'm probably not helping too much. Yeah, you're a clown. <laughs> <laughs> future captain. Um, it was future captain. <laughs> Why are you down the track? Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, people jumped down your throat for that one. They did. Uh, so, yeah, look, there, there'll be some natural changes. It's just a kind of forced. Cole Jasny, if he passed all his tests, he'll be fine because it was a Thursday... It's, isn't it two weeks to the day at the moment still? Yeah, so it was a something. Thursday and then we play on the Friday. So he will, he'll be eligible um, provided he pass all the tests. So I guess that's just yeah, purely then down to what happens with the tests themselves. I don't know. I'm, there'll, there'll obviously have to be some changes, but who the, who the candidates are, there's probably two obvious ones in Bruin and Henry. But then after that, uh, and probably, and sorry, and probably Radagalia. But beyond that, I don't know. I think that the one we haven't touched on is probably the biggest in for mine, and it's got to be Brad Close's sleeves. We need oh. to bring the sleeves back. I cannot stand. I know it's summer. I know we've played in two hot weekends, but we need the sleeves back. Guns out. Yeah, he's not quite Spag- there yet. Spaghetti Spag- arms out. <laughs> I can't go into Collingwood game on a Friday night with Brad Close's um, bare arms showing. It's um, no, nah, it's not going to happen. But. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure he knows what he needs to do. I'm sure he understands his responsibility that uh, he owes his team and the supporter base. Oh, he better. He better. Um, or right. any other games over the weekend uh, that uh, caught our eye? There was a few other things, I guess, happening in the in the AFL, I suppose, over the weekend as well, and probably during the week. Uh, just to run off a couple, uh, there was the Grunt, Gorn and Grundy. They, I think, they kicked a couple about uh, three GG. goals each. That was looking pretty good. Whether that's what if that's the system they go with, it's just a practice game, but um, that could be interesting. And uh, there was a bloke from Sydney, a 20-year-old oh, bloke from Errol Sydney. Gordon. Errol Gordon. Uh, do you want to sing it for us? Oh, Errol. Uh, no. Um, no, you 20, 45, no, 45 touches, three goals, and nine clearances. Pretty handy for a 20-year-old. Uh, and they, 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 I'm sure there'll be a few. Sydney need all the help they can get this year, I think. <laughs> <laughs> They're on the way down. Um and then we had, uh, I don't know, I, I, I prob- this is probably a conversation for another day, but um, the, there's the, all that stuff going on in the AFLW at the moment about the priority signing period, and I don't think that's impacting on the Cats women's team as much. Um, but probably, yeah, probably is one for another another week about if they brought that into the AFL, uh, especially with the new Tassie team, um, potentially around the corner. Uh, would you be happy to say let go of a Tom Atkins or something like that if they wanted to poach or you know I don't know, how would you feel about some of the like Brad Brad Close disappears like I'd I'd be I'd I'd probably in the show I I'd, I think we'd have to pull a pin on the whole channel uh, I don't know what what are your thoughts on that uh, is that something yeah, big can, words yeah I know big words and do you you feel like that's something that's got some um, you think maybe let's they're seeing how they go in that AFLW for that or is that a realistic chance to come into the men's game at some point. I'd hope not. I mean, you know, someone like Danger, who's the oh. AFLPA president, will always vouch for stuff like that. But um, I think it's so different with the women's game because, you know, the men's game's been around for 160 years now. So it's very different and it's easier for a club, uh, for a team to become established very quickly because they've been, you know, Tasmania's got their own football programs that will naturally breed ready made players as well as players who wouldn't want to go home from other AFL clubs, VFL clubs, wherever. So I think with the women, it's quite different because, well, I guess now we're, we're, I guess we're seeing a bit of the benefit of, you know, 
the junior programs actually reaping those mm. benefits and mm. bringing those ready-made players. But still, that doesn't make it side because there's only a handful of those every year getting fed into the competition. So I guess whatever needs to be done, the AFL has gone down the path of, you know, wanting to commercialise before, I guess, building more of a foundation and they're kind of having to go back and fix a few steps and do that kind of stuff, which is a bit disappointing because personally, I think I've said it to Paul before when we had our interview last year, I would have much rather seen the competition start as an under 16s or an oh, under yeah. 18s competition because yeah. those those are women and girls who've been playing you know that's what they grew up playing and then eventually you know what that's six five six years ago the game would be in a much better position now because all those girls would have continued and actually not missed out on being drafted and things like that and then we would be at just a um adult competition and it would be and then I guess the commer- commercialization would come a bit easier because they would have been mm. playing at the high standard that they're now getting to five years ago would have already been built. They're I there guess. already, yeah. And you're, yeah. you're seeing a lot of growth already. I, I miss the under-19 in the, in the men's comp as well. But I'm going to ask you a real hard one, Anna. If it did come into the men's comp, which if and they poached a Geelong player, oh. what would be, absolutely rip your heart out? Which would be the player that... Abs- and Paul, you can answer this too, but if they were going to steal a player from the Cats... Uh, that would just absolutely destroy you, mind, body, and soul. Uh, who would that? Who would that player be? Any, any. Goal is, goal is, Safe care. answer. <laughs> Zero. I don't care. Just like I, I, I really struggle with the commercialization. The game naturally has to move that way. Yeah, yeah. But the movement of those players is really hard to swallow because you don't see somebody like a. You won't see a Joel Selwood. I don't reckon ever again. Really, like. You know, you, you get those yeah, once, in a, once in a generation players who not only, you know, stick with their club, but stick with the whole community the whole time. You know, there are players who play 200 games, but don't really leave an impact and then go somewhere else and finish their career and they're kind of forgotten. So it's 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 kind of hard to swallow because naturally you want to chase the money and you want to chase what's going to be best for the player. But it would hurt to, be, to bring that into a game where it's built on loyalty and yeah. family and... He's Love a, that community. Yeah, he's a one in a fifty year type of player, isn't he? Um, Paul, I know you were. I know you were devastated when Cooper Stevens got traded to the uh, the the enemy. Until I found out that he was actually a hawk to begin with. <laughs> but Dirt modern da- modern day player, if you had to get your heart ripped out of your chest, uh, Indiana I mean, Jones, Temple of Doom style, what would you say? Is that showing my age too much? I don't know. Maybe it is. No, we've, <laughs> I've at least seen Indiana Jones, but. Yeah, Errol won before. I had no idea what you were talking about. Um, uh, I mean, it's Hawk. It's probably Hawk. Don't tell me. Yeah, well, he's um, not going anywhere. And, the, and like, so. there's the yeah, and that's the thing. Like, with his, at his age and stage, you're probably not going to see him move, even if they enacted this uh, program like now. Um, but yeah, he'd he'd be the one of the of the the current list. So it's just uh, there's the history there, of course, and it it's it leans on a lot of the things that Anna was talking about. I mean, he's he's a father son, so there's that component as well, um, which is a very traditional sort of model. He's been there for so long. He's been through. He's created so many memories. You just don't you don't want to see guys like that leave. Um, I mean, not that he not right. that he was traded or anything like that, but the day Jimmy Bartel retired was just a gut wrencher for me. And oh, really, that was a retirement. That wasn't a yeah. that wasn't just you know leave departing the club for you know, a, a trade or anything like that, or, you know, trying to get the last few years somewhere else, like what we saw with a couple other players that were kind of moved on. Mm. This was retirement and it ripped me up. Uh, we'll probably see the same thing happen with this group of premiership players, won't we, towards the end? Like we yeah. can't believe Stevie J and Chappie. Can you imagine that when we win all those premierships that we'd see in those guys in other colours? That's yeah, it sickens me to this day. Um, yeah. Look, Paul, I want to stay with you because just the last one before we finish up the show, uh, the AFL drop some uh, the teaser about the new AFL 23 game. Yeah, big game. You're, you're big in the gaming. If it, for those people no. watching the show that doesn't know, doesn't you can't tell Paul's background that he likes game. No. Um, no but no. You're, you're the man, Paul, so I'm going to – and I'm not, I'm not sure about you, Anna, if you're into your games or not, but Paul has his own uh, podcast as well, uh, Dev Diary. Is that correct? Thank you. Yes. That's so it. Check that one out as well. Um, it's all, all good podcast stores. Yeah, so Big Ant worked on some of the AFL games back in like the early 2000s, like AFL Live 2004. This was kind of the PlayStation 2 sort of era. Um, and then the, uh, for whatever reason, 
license the license got handed on to other developers and the games have been fine i guess whereas big ant the studio has gone on to make some really fantastic cricket titles in recent years they've been doing the ao tennis things they've been doing a whole lot of um takes on you know much i guess more globe trotting sports um and they've managed to get their hands on the license again and um AFL 23 is the product. So it was, it was there at the AFL grand final. There was like a goal kicking demo where you could play as uh, buddy or danger. And just, it was just set shots, but just trying to get people to see what it was like to actually play. And now the game has got a, an April, I can't remember what the release date was. I I think. Was it April 23? I mean, that'd be apt, but. Um, it would be. I haven't uh, got that wrong. It's probably because the game's called AFL 23. Work the Google machine. Um, Hurry up. <laughs> yeah. I'll, no, April 13. April 13. There you go. I had a three um, in it. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's close enough. I guess. I'll be in bail. Um, <laughs> so very much keen to get uh, get my hands on it and um, hopefully have a chat to some of the guys working on it, maybe for some content for us as well. Um, great. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a fairly unique spot within yeah. anyone doing footy stuff that I am well and truly entrenched. I know a lot of people actually working on the game, so I'm hoping to chat to Ross and some people from the team about I don't know maybe dropping in and seeing what seeing what they've got. So I love to do a, a match scene between Cats and Hawthorne and just I don't know if you can rig it so that we're just super powered and whatever and we absolutely smash them by three hundred. I mean or something have you seen like... have you compared did you look at the preseason game? Have you looked at the two lists? I think uh, we're pretty well <laughs> super matter. powered compared to Hawthorne at the moment anyway, right? We'll do it anyway. Um, they'll come back to bite me on it uh, Easter Monday, won't it? <laughs> Paul, Anna, I wanna <laughs> thank you both. Uh any any final thoughts as we go into well, I think we'll probably uh, have a bit of a think next week on. We'll do our pre-season uh, thought. Uh, sorry, our season predictions, I suppose, next week. But uh, any any final thoughts on the on the pre-season uh, going into next week? Uh, and I'll start with you. Any any anything top of your mind? I just like that. I guess we're seeing all the things that have happened in the pre-season is proving that we're going to push again, which is yeah. what exactly what we want. As I said. They can say whatever they want to the media, but we're actually seeing the choice of danger as a captain. I mean, they could have picked any of the, you know, probably Lix Hawkins, Duncan, Stewart, Guthrie, and we would have known, you know, that's what we're pushing for. So we went, you know, we're seeing all these little things that we're doing that show. It's kind of the way. Yeah, in 10, exactly. You know, went into last year with the kind of same mentality and, you know, naturally we have to, get, you know, move it again because everyone would have figured us out by now very easily, you know. The game moves a lot quicker than it did 15 years ago when we went out sure first flag. Yeah. So um, it's just, yeah, I like that we're doing the right thing and it showed that we're, we're willing to give these things a go and we, we know that, you know, careers are going to have come to an end and we'll come to the, an end and injuries happen and things like that. But, yeah. So you're talking about Joel's still playing in round uh... one, right? <laughs> Getting back. I know. I'm just struggling. <laughs> I, I don't remember football without him, to be honest. Oh, so it's gonna hurt. It does feel a bit like that, really? Yeah. Yeah. Round one. Paul, final thoughts from you, mate. Um, I guess a couple interesting little Geelong centric things still to come. Uh, the the Doco launches tomorrow oh, yes. night on, on yes. Foxtel, um, yes. which will be re- I, I sorry tomorrow night as of when we record this. Um, so that'll be really really fascinating to check out, and of course, um. There's also some talk today, actually, about the stadium. I don't know. Did the both of you yeah, see that something news? something in the Audi about it. There's Not something about to... the steel potentially have, having a bit of an issue there, and it might actually curtail all the plans to play at home this year. Yeah. Um, which, oh, well, sorry, to, I guess, debut, sorry, the stand yeah. this year as they planned. So um, that's problematic. So we might have to do the flag the flag raising ceremony in 2024, 2024? maybe. We'll yeah, do the back. We'll yeah. do the back well, to back. We'll do both flags exactly. at the same time. Exactly. You can time. raise both the 2022 it's, and 2023. Work. Do it together. Why not? <laughs> we'll see. Here we go. I, I think uh, I can see a few chickens there. I'll start counting them. Maybe. <laughs> Again, thank you to you both. Uh, this was the first episode of the Hoops Show on Sunday night, uh, the aptly named the Hoop Show, um, and uh, I'm sure there'll be a few teething issues uh, as we reflect on how we went. But uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Uh, we'd also love you to subscribe and like and uh, and uh, let everyone know. Uh, and yeah, because we're we we love this. We love talking about the catters, don't we? And uh, we could talk about them till the cows come home. But uh, anyway, look, next week uh, we're going to do our season preview video. So it'll be a slightly different format from what you'll probably be, uh, what we'll do throughout the throughout the remainder of the year. Uh, but it'll be just looking at 
who we think uh, mostly focused on the cats, but we'll have a little bit of a chat about the rest of the comp as well. So stay tuned for that one. Historically, that's always been the biggest uh, the biggest episode for this channel since we've uh, been around. Uh, I think second, well, it's probably a bit over two years, now, well, a year and a bit, let's say a year and a bit this channel's been going for now. So, so that'll be a big one. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we'll call it a day. Thanks to you both for being on the show. And uh, until next time, go Cats! <laughs>